Welcome to the Game and Party channel. I'm Mike Davis, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to play the two to four player board game Azul Summer Pavilion by Next Move Games. Let's jump right in. To set up a game of Azul Summer Pavilion, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to place these factory discs out on the table and place the number one marker there in the center. In a two-player game, you would only use five of these discs. In a three-player game, you would use seven. And in a four-player game, you would use all nine of these discs. The next thing you're going to do is take the Azul bag here, and grab these nice little rhombus pieces here, and you're going to put four of these on each one of the boards. When you get done, it will look something like this. Then you're going to take the central board here, you're going to take the player pieces, that's the small cylinders, place those on the number five. Everyone starts at five points. Then you're going to take the large cylinder, place it on the number one. That's the first round of the game. There are six rounds in the game. Then you're going to take the tiles out of the bag and place them around this central location here to fill them up. Then you're going to give each player one of these player boards. There's a colored side and there is a monochrome side. It's recommended to use the colored side in your first game. The tiles need to match the colors that they go on. On the monochrome side, you can choose where the tiles go. The center here needs to have one of each color. You cannot duplicate colors on the center tile there. On your turn, you're going to select one of the factory tiles and one of the colors and take all of the tiles of that color from that factory disc. So for example, if I want these two reds, I would just take those off. The other two would go to the center like so. On another player's turn, they may want these, uh, maybe they want these greens over here. They take these two greens, and then the rest of the colors on that disc would go to the center. This will continue happening until all of the tiles have been taken, and that would be the end of the round. The other place you can take tiles from is from the center. The first person to take a tile from the center takes this number one marker. That means you are player one on the next round, which is great. But you also must take a set of tiles. So, for example, in this uh, situation here, I could take the number one. And I could take these two oranges here, since they're the matching colors. Or I could take the number one and just take just the blue. Whatever you do, the number of tiles that you take from the center give you negative points. So in this case here, if I take just the blue, I would get negative one point. If I took the two oranges, I would get negative two points, and I would go back on the scoring tracker. In each round of the game, there are wild tiles. So in the first round, purple is wild. In the second round, green, and so on. So when you're taking tiles from the center here, the wilds change the, the rules a little bit when you take tiles. So for example, let's say I want to take these three red tiles here. If I do, I must also take that wild with it too, which is good because this is wild, so I can use it as a red if I wanted to or any other color. If you're taking from a tile like this one that has two wilds on it, you may only take one of the wilds. So if I take the two greens, I could then take the purple here, but you can only take one wild at a time. The rest of them would then push to the center. And the rules work the same in the center, too. If I was to take this red, I would then take one wild with it. You can't take more than one. After all the tiles have been taken from the factory disc, you'll have a set of tiles in front of you, like so. You'll start placing these on your board around the table in turn order. Placing tiles is quite simple. If you look at the board here, there are numbers on here. There's a one and a two, three, four, five, and six of each color, plus the center also. If I want to place one of my tiles on the number one spot, let's say this red one here, all I need is one tile. I take this one red, I place it on there, and I'm good. It comes back around the table. If I want to place another red on this number two spot, I'll need to have two of these red tiles, or a red and a wild. If I have two red tiles, what I'll do is I'll place that right there on the number two spot, and then this red tile will go into the cool little tower box that it comes with. So you throw it inside of here, and that's kind of your payment for putting it on the number two spot. So yes, if you want to put it on the number six spot, you're going to need six tiles. Five of them will go back into the tower, and one will go on that spot. For scoring, when I place this number one right here, I'm going to get one point. When I place one next to it, let's say I do that on the number six spot here by paying my five tiles to the tower. Now this is touching another tile, I'm going to get two points for that. And so on and so forth. So this would get me three points, this would get me four points, and if you fill up the entire thing, you're going to get six points for the last one you place down. It doesn't matter what number it's on. As long as it's touching other tiles, that's what scores you the points. 
as you score points, you'll simply move your marker up on the track here. If you go negative because you took tiles from the center, you cannot go past number one. Number one is the lowest you can go in score. Another way to score points in the game is by filling up stars. So if I fill up all of the blue star, I'm going to get 12 points. Red's going to give me 14, and so on and so forth down the track here. Also, if I cover up all of the number ones on all of my stars, including the center one, I'm going to get 4 points. If you cover up all the twos, you get 8, 3 is 12, 4 is 16. And you'll notice over on the left-hand side, there's these little symbols here. These symbols match the ones that are on your player board. Let me explain how those work. On the player board, you'll see those symbols, the little circular one, the statue one, and the one on the outside here. If you surround one of those symbols, like for example, if I have two reds here on that side, and then on the inside, I've got maybe a blue, and then maybe another red on the inside. Every color on the inside must be different. Now I've surrounded that circle, and I'll get to take one tile from the uh, central board here. So the central board, if I cover up the circle, I get to take one tile from here, immediately and I can still and I can use that tile the next time I place uh, tiles down on my board. If I, if I surround the statue I get to take two and if I surround or get two tiles right next to this little bookend looking thing here I'm going to get to take three from the center. But this is right next to the number five and number six so it takes a lot of tiles to cover those up to get that. If at the end of the round you have tiles left over that either you don't want to spin or can't spin you can save up to four of these and place them on the corners of the board here. These are little holding spots for those four tiles. So you can carry over four tiles to the next round. If you have any more tiles than that that you don't spend or don't want to spend, you need to put them back into that tower box and you lose one point for each one you had to discard. And just some clarification on the center star. On the center star, each tile you place here must be a different color. So for example, if I placed my one red here, I can't then later on come back and pay these two reds to place the red here on that two. That's not allowed. I could though pay, have two oranges, spend one of those, goes back to the box, and my number two spot would be an orange one now. Any tiles you take from the center star central board here are immediately refilled. One more clarification on the placing of wilds. If you have three wilds, let's say I have three purples, and it's uh, the term are wilds or purples, I can't use these three purples to place on, say, the orange over here. That's not allowed. I would need to have at least one orange. Now, if I have an orange and purples, now I can spend it, place that orange there, and then the purples can go back to the box. And that's it. That's how you play Azul Summer Pavilion. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them when I can. Thanks for watching. I play Azul Summer Pavilion. If you have clarification... Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, check out our podcast, and you can find us on all of our social media sites on GameAndParty.com. See you on the next video.